You are about to enter the world of miracle. The story is wonderful, but it can get dark at times. Content warnings can be found in the episode description or in chat. But before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors for this game, without whom this just would not be possible. Our first sponsor is Alchemy RPG, an immersive new virtual tabletop experience specializing in theater of the mind, stunning visuals, and building worlds through exploration, roleplay, and combat. In fact, our game was recorded using Alchemy's native interface, so you'll have a front row seat to some of its great features. You can download Alchemy now at alchemyrpg.com and make use of their incredible library, including content from Griffin Saddlebag, 1985 games, and content from our next sponsor, Hit Point Press. Big bads are on the loose. Foil the schemes of a gelatinous kingpin tangled with a mischievous sea dragon and face down world ending threats. With over 25 fully fleshed out boss monsters and over 100 more monsters and magic items, Big Bads is a two volume collection of the biggest, baddest boss monsters in all of 5e launching in March on Kickstarter. Sign up now to be notified when it launches in March at bigbads.com. Lastly, I'd like to thank Hero Forge for providing our players with the ability to create an array of digital character minis specifically for this game using its massive library of 3D asset choices. A huge thank you to our sponsors, and now, enjoy the show. Last time on Of Dawn and Dusk. The teenage girl walks into the room, dark mist following her. My daughter, we had, we had no idea. She points towards the altar, towards the crystal shard. Oh, so you want to ascend to godhood in place of your mom. Don't want to have to do this. As his hand slowly closes into a fist, as the shard cracks and shatters outside of her hand. She looks towards him and starts walking back towards the entryway. You're lucky I know where to get more of these. And she's gone. I thought she didn't know about the Lake of the Gods. You need to go there and stop her. I cannot enter the Lake of the Gods as a god, and I need you to chase her there. I do not know how to tell you to find somewhere that is built and meant to be unfindable. Luma speaks up, I'll go. I've sent more than a few souls beyond our realm, not really knowing if there was life on the other side. I think it's refreshing to know that a god can die too. I'm not necessarily sure we should allow that to happen, but a little fear tends to motivate what I imagine. The same is true of gods. Maybe they'll be better. Doesn't Noxus kind of give you the heebie a little bit? What are the heebie Uh, when you feel something is off in your soul. Yes, 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 yes. It starts off like right behind my belly button and then it starts to crawl up and then it like oh, gets to the back of my apps. neck. And I, I lift up and I'll take your hand and I and, and I run <laughs> oh, your hand God, up no. to, to so that you can fully understand the trajectory of the heebie-jeebies. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a lot of heebin and jeebin. And I felt Ooh. it right 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 away oh, when we God, first were transferred so here. hot on this it's boat. Hot. Our mother used to sing in the mornings. We went a long ways to calm our souls and I sing when I pray. Dreaming you are still alive. Breathing the ocean calm. Maybe I will oversleep my alarm. Makes me feel better sometimes and you see in front of you a massive stone doorway. Midnight, this darkness exudes from you and settles itself in front of the door. Just before Leo sends out this beam of dawn light towards the door, a huge shadow is cast upon it and slowly the door begins to creak open. Hello everyone and welcome back to Of Dawn and Dusk. This is the penultimate episode of our four-part miniseries. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and players, thank you for coming back. Um, first two episodes were absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to see um, what happens in these next two. Let's start off with, uh, let's go with Luis. Why don't you introduce yourself? 
Hi, everybody. I'm Luis Carrazzo, uh, and uh, I'm playing uh, Nerix of the Vatri, uh, half brother, half orc, half brother to Christian's character, Leo. Hello, I'm Christian Navarro, and I am playing the aunties, half elf, half human, younger brother to Nerex, Luis Carrazzo. Hi, I'm Persephone, and I'm playing Holly Danes, aka Midnight, the anti capitalist, terrorist, and also artist. Hi, I'm Jasmine, that bronze girl, and I'm playing Mildred Mulvihill, the dragonborn druid whose mom is pressuring her to get married. <laughs> um, yes, those are our four characters, along with uh, a few a few of our you know NPCs and, and side friends that they have brought along with them. friends what men call me in college <laughs> we are in the world of miracle um ruled uh by the god of darkness noctos and the former goddess of light luma who is now in her demigod form hoping to be re-inducted into godhood uh you all have reached the entrance to the lake of the gods and through some puzzle solving were able to uh, breach its entrance and now enter a dark dark cavern find yourself in this nearly silent cave. Uh, the only sound you hear is the sound of your own footsteps walking against the about half inch of water that is pooled on the floor. Uh, it, there's incredible darkness in this cave. Uh, you cannot see the walls. In fact, it almost seems like this empty space around you, but you still have enough light to be able to see your friends. And that seems to be the only light that is actually uh, there with you, um, oddly, the as you step through this cave, the reflections of your of your uh, of the water on the ground and the ripples through uh, your steps do reflect some sourceless light that uh, you you don't know where it's coming from. You continue walking for a while in some eerie silence, and Leo from the back of the group. Um, you notice that you were previously walking next to Luma, um, but you hear, you hear her trip and, and stumble into the water. He's a, a small splash. Uh, you hear just to your right. I, I turn. Uh, is she in the water? Is she has she fallen into the water? Or she's she just... she's fallen. She's on all fours, um, kind of struggling to get up right now. I'll uh, I'll walk over and offer her my hand, my lady. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I apologize. I I feel weak. Perhaps you should get on top of me. I'm not lying that's, now. That's not a bad idea. I. She climbs on. I've never really spent more than a few moments in this form. Um, there was always a tear and hmm. the induction ceremony waiting for me when I awoke. And it'll take some getting used to being in this form. I. Honestly, doesn't feel love. good to be mortal, does it? <laughs> um, no, no, it, it's, uh, I guess I've taken for granted what you all have been through, what I guess my daughter has been going through. You mean the advantages you get from being a god toying with mortal lives. Anyway, Humphreys, would you mind turning on a light? <laughs> Clap on. <laughs> Humphreys, um, the two little dots of his pinprick eyes says, uh, Miss Danes, you know quite well this is the only light that I can provide. I oh, I cast a light not... cantrip through Professor Humphreys. I forgot light... to say that. Okay, great. Yeah, um... Sorry, that was just the joke part of it. <laughs> he, he he glows um, and he says, ah, uh, yes, I guess this is the best usage of my capabilities, I understand. Uh, let me light the way <laughs> for you all. Um, Professor Humphreys floats on in front of you. Um, Leo Luma continues speaking to you i i guess i hadn't really thought of it yet my daughter has been has spent thousands of years like this hasn't she yes and she seems to have mastered abilities that i her father and i do not know of 
Well, anger can be one hell of a motivator. Diamond seems to have been one hell of a teacher. I must admit, and I say this with caution, but you too have erred trusting someone like him for so long without any check or balance. There seems to have been complacency among us gods when it comes to uh, when it comes to Diamond's aid of our uh, state. It, I don't quite know how long he's been planning this, but it seems to be incredibly well thought out and uh, malevolent. I, I will stop in my tracks and a, a, a small smile will creep across his face and uh, and I will say to Luma, I have to tell you that <laughs> the most comforting feeling I've ever felt has happened just now because <laughs> I don't know, there's something, there's something truly good about hearing that the gods can make mistakes and can learn and grow. Is it? Really? Yes. You don't find what she just said as a way to absolve herself of blame by saying the gods instead of herself and her husband? I truly do include myself in that. I am far from blameless. I am now realizing I've made many mistakes. Good. It's nice to realize that you fucked up. But here's the thing. Is really putting someone back in charge that fucked up the right decision? Especially considering all the wonderful things you've done to help the world. In case that wasn't obvious, that was sarcasm. I don't know yet what the right thing to do is. It is, uh, I can tr I can promise you it has been on my mind this, this time. You can promise me. Hmm? <sighs> For what it's worth, anyway. Hmm. You continue moving forward as Luma um, falls into a contemplative silence uh, from uh, on top of Nimi. I'll, I'll be behind her, just so you know, Nini and, and yeah. Nima. As you continue walking forward, you, uh, even with Professor Humphreys lighting the way, there is only a, a little bit of ambient fog and dust that he is able to alight within his radius of, uh, of this spell. There isn't any detail that comes from um, Professor Humphreys being a little bit of, of a beacon for you all. Uh, Nerex, you start developing a sensation within yourself. You uh, you don't know if it's the dust or if your allergies have kicked up, but your eyes begin to uh, to begin to burn slightly. Um. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh, what? Uh, I think I got something in my eye. Uh, could someone? Um. Eyelash, maybe. I don't know. Can someone look? And I'm just gonna be okay, like, big brother. I feel like there's something, <clears throat> something you as here. Try as you might, you cannot keep your eyes open for more than just a slight moment. And this this burning and aching continues from behind your eye sockets. It's closing them tighter and tighter doesn't seem to be helping at all. And as you rub them as, as hard as you can, they are it continues this pressure building and building, and you cannot take it any longer. <clears throat> uh oh, uh, I'm gonna draw my weapon. What is? Something Whoa. must be near. Something is. Something is attacking my mind or Resident something. Kila might have an idea of what's going on. Um, uh, yeah, of course, of course. Um, you already examined the, him hard enough. The, you can do it from the front now. Excuse me. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, put the bl put the blade away, maybe, because that's making me a little. He is swinging it wildly. <laughs> Near, nearly oh, hitting oh. Here. Back. Get out of my head! Okay, Nerex, okay. Un there is so much pressure behind your eyes that you feel like you cannot, no you can no longer hold it back and you open your eyes and light explodes like ri golden ribbons from your eyes. You shake your head and it sprays like a hose across the room and you realize that it's like falling into a, a low, 
fog above the water. It's, it only lasts a few seconds, and this is nothing like you guys have ever seen. Nerex, you are completely blinded for a moment until the dust settles, and literally this light kind of settles above the water of the ground, settling like a low fog hanging around your shins. I run to my brother. What is wait, that? no, wait, 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 wait. Stand back, I don't know what that was. I draw my sword and stand back. Uh, so it's around my ankles that there's this like it's around like the room's an ankles. It's like oh. kind of just this illuminated golden light that's just diffusing. Um, Luma, you're the goddess of light. What's going on? I have no idea. This is not like anything I've ever experienced before. You're literally the goddess of light, and you have no idea what's happening with the light. As I think we've well established, I don't know everything that uh, there is to know. Uh, can I'm I going to... investigate oh. the light? Yeah. Yeah, you can investigate the light. Um, you can all roll investigation checks if you like, or perception checks, whichever one you're better at. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's perception. It's a 14. Let's go with, per let's go with perception. Yeah. I shouldn't. I really shouldn't roll digital dice. They have a uh, vendetta against 19. me. <laughs> Six. Nineteen's highest. Fifteen. Fifteen. <clears throat> uh, with your investigation, Mildred, you're you're looking at this light that has begun to settle, and it it's definitely moving and kind of parting, almost as if it's kind of this oil and water um, kind of mixture, not not quite combining. It's almost separating right now into several globules of light mm. um, and spreading around the room. These these globules begin to congeal and take different shapes and they just kind of slowly float around the room. Nerex, this is actually now beginning to look a little bit more familiar to you. Oh, okay. Do I get the sense that this is a manifestation of my kind of ancestral connections? Yes. you're. Your guardians have never manifested like this, but, and honestly, nobody's ever seen your guardians manifest before. This is the first time that anybody's experienced, that you've experienced anybody else seeing these things. Huh. I'm gonna look around at the group and as soon as it dawns on me what's happening, even though it's happening in a brand new way and I start to put it together, I'm going to, Especially, I want to see how that lands on my brother if he starts to realize what's happening. I think slowly, yeah, I think slowly as they begin to form, and I'm watching you watch them, it's starting to, to dawn on me that it might be yours. These are, uh, uh, I, I start to approach one of the, if it starts to become a figure, I start to approach one of them. Careful, brother. No, this is. This is okay. You all begin to watch uh, Nerex walk towards one of these shapes as they do slowly write themselves into a humanoid-like shape, uh, seamlessly transitioning into a walking gait. Um, they begin to gain detail, and you realize that all of these shapes are either orcs or half-orcs. I'm gonna, as that starts to take shape, I turn back to the group and I, I look to, to Luma. The gods aren't the only things that are immortal. <sighs> I'm not sure mortality is at play here. I guess a sense of it. You are able to summon spirits from beyond. They come to me, yes. It's never like this, brother. This is new. I am going to look to Mildred. Mm -hmm. And I, you probably notice that I'm looking back and forth at this new figure. And although I'm seeing, although I'm, I'm noticing half orcs and orcs, I'm looking to see if a different type of figure emerges. And I keep looking at Mildred. Uh, right now, all you see are half-orcs and orcs, and they're interacting with you to a sense. They're not ignoring you. 
Um, they're acting as if your space is right there. They're not like ghosts passing through you on their own uh, on their own way. They do seem to be all walking in the same direction generally, but they're kind of like kind of moving their shoulders to walk by you in a little bit of a crowded um, sense of direction, all going in the same towards the same place. Okay. Um, I turn. I'm going to. Uh, I, I walk up to Mildred. I, I, I don't know what my ancestors are trying to tell me right now, but this, this to me feels like maybe it's something that's happened before. I don't know if you can, if you can help me determine whether we are in a, a <clears throat> memory of sorts. Um, my professional opinion, I think you're ancestors are trying to protect you from something bad that's about to happen and you would probably notice that mildred is like looks like scared for the first time and since you've been on this sort of adventure together what what is uh, what is what is bothering you mildred uh i i don't think we're um i think something very bad is about to happen and i feel like your ancestors are trying to warn you or guide you or protect you. What about you. your ancestors? I, I I don't know how to do that. Like I saw you, one. I saw one of an mine? ancestor appear. I believe it was yours. Really? I conjured them on the boat and I saw a figure that looked just like you appear right next to you. Oh. It's nice to know that they're around. I... I I think I always knew they were there, but it's nice to it's nice to know that. I uh, reach out to Mildred and I lay a finger right on like your uh, uh, chest. You trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I have killed things with my fingers before, but I assure you, I'm not trying to. Listen, what way do you? Oh, I, I believe your ancestor is in here. And yep. I, I, I kind of yep. press into your chest. Uh huh. Yeah. That's... I saw them go in there, so oh, I, I think that's... they're closer to you than you think. At least closer. Yours are closer to you, you than. And I gesture mm -hmm. around to the ones that are walking past us. Than mine seem to be, to me right now. Yeah. As you've stood here a while. <clears throat> Div uh, you realize, uh, divine sense. Yeah. Divine sense. Yeah. Um. Read uh, divine sense for me. Uh, uh, Detect good and evil until the end of turn, 60 feet in my uh, uh, vicinity. How, uh, uh, I know the location of any celestial fiend or undead that is not behind total cover. This gives you a sense of undead, but not in a malevolent sense. Um, this seems to be um, more like uh, a intangible um, kind of presence that is that is for you I will I'll, I'll, I'll creep to the outskirts of this group that we're with um, and draw my sword and I'm just uh, uh, as these interactions are happening I'm I'm locked in watching the surroundings because this doesn't feel good yeah as you're walking towards the edge of this um, you're realizing that these spirits are staying within a radius of Nerex uh, as you walk past it um, there are new figures kind of entering this radius of golden light and they're they're starting to become more detailed now. Now you see the grays and the green skins of the um, of these orcish uh, ancestors, memories. You're not really sure what's going on, but as they walk away from Narex in, in the same direction, the light kind of resituates itself and goes back towards the uh, one of the other figures that is walking past. So it's kind of this continually shuffle of spirits that are walking towards and then kind of going back and all walking past your group. Does it seem like it's a, almost like a loop? Or are they different no, figures each time? you're seeing different figures. Actually, you're seeing figures that you recognize. Ooh, who do I recognize? You recognize uh, uh, the baker from your tribe walk by you. You recognize one of the, one of the warriors that, uh, that battled alongside of you. Um, you look closely and you see, you see your sister walking wait a by. Second. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. I'm seeing people that I think should be alive right now. You see people that you know are alive right now. I will go up to my sister. I wouldn't kind of try to 
Uh, if, if she's in, like intangible or something, I'm going to reach towards her. You reach towards her and you're unable to touch her, but you see very clearly that your sister is sobbing. Brother, is that who I think it is? It is, Leo. Come here. Does this mean that... I don't know what this means, but it's not good. Why are you here? Why is this happening? And I'm, I'm gonna like sweep my arms through everyone that I recognize because to me this means they're dead. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, you are s sweeping out to people and it doesn't seem like the people around you are necessarily, necessarily feel like it's it's an uncalled for action. It, they kind of act, act towards you as if you're kind of lashing out uh, until you see, you hear a voice say, brother, brother, careful. Careful, calm. I calm turn yourself. towards that voice. You turn to a, a, a creature, a voice that you recognize. Uh, it is a, a large half orc that you recognize as your brother, Orgoth, your older brother. Leo, oh, come here. Do you hear? Do you hear what he has to say, or? Orgoth, this is my brother. Do you can you hear me? Orgoth. Nerex, it is time for us to mourn together. We mourn must go. what? It is about to start. What is about to start? Your brother, Nerex. You remember this memory is becoming quite clear to you. This all happened to you years ago. This was the day that your younger brother, Shalk, fell in combat. His first battle alongside you, and you saw him fall on the battlefield near you. We must go to the funeral pile, brother. But this has already happened, yes? This all happened. The funeral? So this is a memory. This is... And Nerex starts to settle down. Show me the way. Or I'm gonna God, I, I forgot. Pat him on the shoulder and give him guidance. <clears throat> I'm just going to pull you close and say, brother, I, I would not trust. I would not trust these things. Is there a way for me to on that and, uh, uh, and, and with Mildred's kind of touch there's something about that actual physical touch that kind of brings me back to something more real and present and hearing Leo's voice and his warning I, uh, I start to kind of look around and <sighs> is there a way to know if this is a trick I, I would like to um, want to roll insight perhaps I can help I Yes. Humphreys. I'll turn to midnight. Humphreys. Yes, Miss Banks. Do you have any idea what's going on? Or have you seen anything like this before? Um, I I'm can, a... um, so if yeah, I can roll... make an intelligence check on this, it has plus yeah, nine. Roll history on behalf of, um, of Humphreys. Cool. He is proficient at it. Oh, he's proficient at it? Cool. Yeah. Let's, Let's give him a plus four to intelligence. Okay. It's a plus nine base. And I keep dropping dice. Cool. So, okay, that is an 18 on the die, so a 27? Sure. Miss Staines, this appears to me, although it's something that I have never seen before, that this is a traditional orcish tribe uh, funeral ceremony and procession. These mm -hmm. orcs seem to be in mourning of a fallen warrior. Yes, but Nerex, didn't you say that this is something that happened in the past? This has already happened. I remember this. I was there. Have you ever heard of manifestations of light portraying a memory in any way? Have I ever heard of manifestations of light portraying a memory, Johnny? I'm also asking Humphreys, too. Let's see if... Um, Nerex, you don't... Um, this has never happened to you before. The only thing that you can think of and you realize this as Professor Humphreys speaks up. Uh, Miss Danes, 
I do not know the capabilities quite that uh, your friend Nerex of the Vatrai uh, is able to procure, but it seems as if his, as he called it, ancestral guardians have been uh, manifesting and interacting with this cave's spiritual capabilities in some odd way. The cave has spiritual capabilities. It seems that way, yes. Hmm. Um, I turn to Orgoth, if he's still there. Orgoth's waiting for you. I look at him and I say, show me the way to our brother again. It appears I may have forgotten. I'll turn to the rest of the group. Come with me. It's impossible to know what... This is a bad idea, brother. I'm going to take Leontes' hand and be like... <clears throat> what is happening here? It's the only way forward. I think your brother needs to process this, Leontes. I, I think. I'll, I'll, I'll turn to Mildred so that we're earshot. Oh, so that we're out of earshot from everyone. And, uh, and I'll sing... Mildred, I do not know. I, I don't know you well. Um, how can I say this? And you see that for the first time, real sort of panic is starting to sit, settle mm -hmm. in here. Um, we all have a purpose, do we not? Uh, my brother and I, we deal in death. That is our way. I do not think it is meant to be his way, but I fear. I feel he might have to deal with more loss today. Stay close to him. Of course. We'll be with him on this journey. Um, I don't want to interrupt um, at all, but I'm going to walk over to Mildred and Leontes, and I have a purple and green potion in my hands. Not to interrupt what you're saying, but I have a feeling things are about to go really bad quite quickly. Oh, sorry, I only drink organic. It is organic. Um, no, sorry. I did plants, I'm plant-based. It's plant-based. What is it? What? What is it? One of these will... Well, there's sort of... Um, let's say there's a hobby of mine with alchemy. Um, one of these will increase your armor. And the other will give you a flying speed. Give that to my brother. Give the AC to my brother. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, there's no additives and it's no, so it's healthy. Completely I would be completely pure. It's gluten free. Yes, there's Nerex. no gluten in it. It's not bread. <laughs> your brother uh, kind of reaches out to your shoulders, and you don't feel necessarily any physical touch there, but you feel a warmth in his touch. And you say, Nerex, let us go honor our brother. And he kind of guides you by the shoulder to start walking with him in the same direction all the orcs are walking. I take two steps and then I stop and I call back to Leo. Leo, come with me to honor our brother. And you see in Leo's eyes that he's scared, but he's following you. I'm going to give the potion to Leontes. You give it to him. Thank you. I'll, I'll run up alongside you and say, uh, brother, you should drink this just in case. And Mildred. Yes? It is gluten-free, completely organic, and it'll allow you to heal us quickly if we go down. I think you should drink it. Is she lying to me? Uh, roll roll <laughs> insight, bitch. Insight, <laughs> persuasion, or deception. Okay, I'll roll. You want me to roll persuasion? Or deception, don't tell us. Wait, are you lying? <laughs> <Let's> see. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> I, I, I too would like to roll an insight of sorts. I are you I doing it on the whole situation? That's oh shit. No, on, on, no, on, on, on Leo. On Leo. Leo, roll it roll opposing checks as well. I have a plus um, eight to insight. That's a twenty two. You don't even need to roll. <laughs> <laughs> eight eight alone is higher than what I rolled into oh my God. <laughs> it, is, it is completely unnatural. Everything in it is an additive, a chemical. Oh. It is plant based. <laughs> you just but it is I did. It is terrible. I rolled Leo six. versus Nerex, what'd you get? 14. Leo? I think we both rolled 14. 14? 14. All right, yeah. one more roll. Here, here, here's, here's just a, a, a 
to, to describe what I'm trying to ascertain, what happened yeah. is Leo's, Leo looks afraid. He's been hesitating. He's, he's kind of holding me back from following the spirits of my family, of my tribe. And he comes up to me with a potion of something that I should drink. And I say to you, why should I drink this? What's this for? And my next roll is a whopping four. Leo, or Christian, uh, <laughs> roll, uh, roll another roll. Six? Wow. Six, you roll a four? A four. <laughs> I rolled a four. You oh, win. Man. Um, he, still, he still beat that. You can see that I'm not happy. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I imagine that we're sort of, we're, we're walking side by side slowly ahead of the group here and and not really looking at each other so I, I will I'll look out and I'll just say um, brother you are strong but even strong people need help and this this will help you in case we come across something stronger than you what do you think we're going to come across of course there's danger up ahead but you Big think brother that the I think that it's my job is leading us to harm and you see that Leo shrinks a little bit, and this is typical big brother, little brother stuff, right? He just put me in my place, and I, 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 I'm looking at my feet, sort of, I'll say, Big brother, it is my job to usher the living to the dead. I don't like seeing you walk with them. I don't know what it means. Then you must understand the purpose of my ancestors and why they walk amongst us. You see things in black and white, living and dead, but there's an entire gray area in between, my brother, that you fail to notice. And that is the space that they walk in. And that is the space where there's true heart and true wisdom. And I have been trying my entire life to reach out to you and invite you to be a part of that family. But all you do is talk about your gods of death and this other job that you have. But what about me, brother? I've been your family this entire time. And my family here, the spirits of them, whatever's left of them, they're calling to me. And if they're calling to me, then they're calling to you as well. Because whatever family is mine, whatever blood is mine, it's yours through me. Just this once, come with me, without questioning, without resisting. Come with me, for my family, which is yours. This is your brother too, come. This memory that's coming back, it's because you weren't there, I'm convinced. You needed to be there. That is your fallen brother. Come with me and pay your respects to your brother, to our brother. And I start walking ahead and I hand the potion back. I feel like I may have caused a fight. I'll follow behind, but I, 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 uh... Nothing, I follow behind. Narex, you walk forward with Orgoth's um, lead towards um, where all these half-orcs and orcs have crowded. Uh, You see before you this manifestation of your spirits and light has uh, congealed into this tall pyramid-like structure. And as it gains form, you realize that this is a funeral pyre that has been yet unlit. And as you stand next to your brother, shoulder to shoulder, uh, you see your aunt, the chieftain of the Vatari tribe, um, walk forward with a torch. You see your father nearby, holding his countenance strong as another leader of this community. And you see as your aunt drops the torch to the pyre as it slowly goes up in flames. Orgoth turns to you, well, doesn't turn to you, continues looking forward and says, Behold your brother. 
honor him. He went the way he would have wanted. Uh, there's two things I'm doing. The first thing is I'm looking around and I'm trying to see if there's anything that feels incongruent with the memory. Anything that happened, anything that's being depicted here that is not how it was. Mm -hmm. No role needed. This is exactly as it happened. And I, uh, I, I reach out to my, to, to Leo, to my brother. Come with me. I hesitate. I, 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 I'm looking into this fire and uh, I see myself burning. But um, I'll go. I'll go with you. Leo, you stand at Nerex's side. I step forward and I recall some of the words that I said on the day of this actual funeral. And I speak to my fallen brother. Your passing honors us, brother. You fought well. You died well. And you hereby join our ancestors, our protectors in the next life, in the space in between. May you have mercy and may you take pride in who you were and who you will continue to help us all become. And then I turn to Leo. What would you like to say? I'll pull out uh, my incense stick and uh, I'll, I'll strike it and light it. Death is only the beginning, brother. You served your family well in life, as you will do in your death. Look after my brother, our brother. And I'll let the incense burn and toss it into the pie. I look to my father. He catches your eye. And I scan around at the people that I was not raised by, but when I came to seek them out, they embraced me as if I had never left. You see these people around you that you've considered family at this point. And they all look at you with some with a sense of pity, some that you have fought beside a sense of brotherhood. And your eyes meet again with your brother, Leo. Leo, your scene of what is happening has shifted. The lights fade away for all of you now as these creatures, these half orcs, these vat this Vatrai tribe begins to dissipate. And instead, in its stead, you see the light manifest a walkway in front of you, a wooden walkway defining itself into gnarls and knobs, almost like a tree branch, a thick molded tree branch with guards lining either side. This look like home? This looks like your father's home of Arvindor. <laughs> does everyone see this? Everyone does see this. Uh, Nerex, as jarring as it may be, your tribe has fallen away, and now you see the scene that you do not recognize, but seems to have some sort of um, effect on your brother, Leo. I stay by his side. It's Arvindor. This is your father's home. <sighs> Brother. 
Brother, I don't know. And I grab your face and I look in your eyes. The past is prologue, brother. Prepare yourself. And I will turn and start walking towards the gate. You start walking down this walkway, um, completely lined by these elven guards in natural armor and spears at their side, all at complete attention. As in the middle of this hallway is their leader, the high priest of the Church of the Crowned Moon, and your father, Gilmir Goldleaf. Standing at his side is uh, his wife, your stepmother. I can't help myself. I, I fall to my knee, as is custom. You fall to your knee and you hear your father's voice. Rise, my son, as today is a most honorable day. You serve your purpose well for this kingdom. And as you rise, you look up to him and he's not meeting your gaze. He is glancing out to the side. You, you recognize a a slight rumble and noise from below you and you realize that the kingdom of Arvindor has uh, huddled and, and kind of crowded below this branch hundreds of feet up, almost as if there is some, they're waiting for something. Your mother, your stepmother, looks at you, meets your eye, unlike your father, with complete disdain on her face. That you have rehearsed this this uh, ceremony a number of times. The specific number that has been in your head all day is the number eleven. Do I see? Who is it? Who is it? That who is it? Who's your father there? and your stepmother are blocking that light of sight. I don't want to do it again. Your mother, or your stepmother, unsheaths a sword, oh, the no. sword that you have come to call, but not yet at this point, mother's kiss. And she hands it to your father. He ceremonially offers the handle to you and with a smile and meeting your eye for the first time. What greater honor than to kill for your god. Lo, there is none. Please don't ask me to do this. Please don't ask me to do this. His smile persists. I grab the sword. Um, can I see who it is? As you grab the sword, the two figures part the way, and you see kneeling away from you a man standing, or sitting, sorry, kneeling at the end of the walkway, up against a pedestal above the crowd of thousands. I will, uh, I'll approach the, I'll approach, I'll approach the, the, the elf. <laughs> As you walk towards him, the crowd begins to emit a low rumble, growing into a roar as you grow closer. Wait, 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 wait. This is, no, 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 no. And like, Mildred like runs over and like stands between the vision and Leontes. I'm like, you're, th th this isn't who you are. You're not gonna kill an innocent person to appease an entity. No, come on, no. This is, Mildred, I believe. Ludacris. <laughs> that this has already happened. I know, but why d do it again? Maybe, maybe this is a... I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. I mean, the, 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 maybe the reason that the memory with, with, with Narex turned out different is you were there, and you weren't there the first time. Maybe this time you're supposed to 
do something different. But it's clear that this is weighing heavy on you. You know what? Mildred is right. Um, can I walk over to the man sure. that's on his the knees? Does he have shackles on? He does. Cool. I'm going to take out a pot of paint and I am going to paint a key inside and then take it out so that it fits. Ah, I love this. Um, unfortunately, there's no surface to even paint this on. <sighs> Damn. It is all ethereal. Um, I am watching this display and something kind of, something clicks and narrates. And he starts to walk towards Leo and Mildred, you're, you're, you're kind of in front of Leo, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of in the way. Yeah. And, uh, starts to walk towards Leo, sees Holly over there by the, the, who, who looks to be the person that's about to get executed. And I nod to you. I make eye contact with Mildred and you see like a, a nod. Thank you. And then I start to head towards Leo's fob. I'm going to get right behind that motherfucker. And if I get there, all I'm going to say, and I do not stop is I'm gonna say into his ear, into his ear, you do not deserve your son. He is so much better than you. And I am on a loop going to be saying again and again and again, how this man is not worthy of the son that is right before him until something stops me. You, into his face, getting uncomfortably close with this figure that is not even recognizing your presence, continuing with a sly smile across his face, looking on at his son that he has used as a tool for the last several years of his life. Leo, what do you do? I look back at my father and um, I, th I, I imagine that midnight and and Mildred, um, I don't, re I mean, they're there, but I, I, I don't really see them or, or, or feel them there because I'm looking at my father and this is the only time that he smiles at me. And I raise the sword slowly. You raise the sword as you stand beside this figure, uh, a guard nearby brings a bag to cover the figure's face and he stops he stops him for a moment he says wait wait and he looks up at you with at the same time sorrow and kindness in his eyes and although you cannot hear him you can make out what he is saying words that you have had in your memory since this day you see Viz Kaim say, you know he is wrong. He will do the right thing. No! The head of Viz Kaim falls down the several hundred story drop to the crowd below as the crowd roars. And then it's all gone. <sighs> The light dissipates again and falls back to the floor in its low-hanging fog. And it manifests a much smaller scene. You see two chairs sitting across uh, a desk with a elderly halfling man, balding and wearing spectacles. He seems to be in the middle of a very detailed explanation. I must emphasize the fact that no one has come back from the brink of learning this knowledge such as we speak of. It is all theoretical, obviously, but there must be some way of performing magic at this scale that isn't purely and inherently evil. What say you, Miss Daines? I'm not doing this. Do you hear that, Cave? I'm not 
doing this. You want to toy with us? Do something else. Professor Humphreys continues, uh, Miss Staines, if you two could please pay attention during this very short tutoring session that you have yourself um, made an appointment for. I do, uh, of course, speak of something that is quite off topic of what your test will be on tomorrow, but please, if you could just um, humor me. Uh, your theoretical arcana, Professor Quentin Humphreys, is indeed qu uh, straying quite far from uh, the curriculum. But uh, you've learned that the best way to get through these digressions are to help him along his train of thought during these tir tirades. The orb Professor Humphreys raises and says, what is happening? Nothing that you want to see. Professor Humphreys in his halfling form continues. It all boils down to the fact that a phy phylactery powers itself on the souls it gains from the ether. And in case you weren't listening to that lecture three weeks ago, the ether is what we have discovered, ha discovered houses all of the souls that pass from this world. Yes, what is some called by some the weave or otherwise. I know, Professor. Nearly, the weave is the manifestation that allows those uh, souls to sometimes come to our world. However, the ether itself is what houses all of these gods, uh, all of these souls. Some call it the, the shadow, um, the shadow realm, the, the shadow fell. Um, but commonly known as the ether, um, if you don't mind staying with me here, several studies have shown that the soul is in fact the key to prolonging life indefinitely. Uh, the innate selfishness in Lich's decision to unnaturally extend their life, their time on Miracle lies with their desire to, 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 desire to be separate from their phylacteries. Um, if there's a way to keep the soul and the mind united, that would allow for people to continue on, provided the necessary resources. Uh, in fact, researchers at Sonera Academy successfully prove the ability to transfer parts of a mouse, uh, not quite um, you or I uh, ability, but the mouse's consciousness to a device, uh, but it has no memories of its life as a mouse. Um, oh no, this is what they did to you. And that is where the I problem really... lies. Without a soul, Memories cannot transfer along with the consciousness after death. Additionally, it would have to it would power this proto-phylactery uh, perpetually using its own soul, no longer requiring to feed off of souls. Again, this is all theoretical. This is what they did to you. I... You told me this, and I never realized this is what they did to you. The halfling, um, Professor Humphreys, had been pacing during this um, digression, but he sits back down, sits back down, removes his spectacles, um, cleaning them with the corner of his shirt, and looks down at his hands, um, nervously rubbing them together. Uh, Miss Danes, I must admit, the idea of falling to a place in the afterlife to which all souls travel feels, has always felt incredibly nihilistic to me. It does, matter, does not matter your morals, your ethics, your deeds, the people you help, we all end in the ether. If I were any lesser of a man, I would consider delving into these dark teachings, building myself a phylactery, however, we both know that that would require far more patience and resources and funding from the school to succeed in doing such a thing, but that does not seem to be in the cards. But to avoid the ether, a lofty goal indeed. Did you do this to yourself? Professor Humphrey stands back up. Well then, I, I believe that is all the time we have today. Uh, I'll be seeing you in class tomorrow, Miss Daines. I apologize, I have another appointment to reach. Yes, Professor. Uh, he walks out of the room um, a bit abruptly, kind of ending his lecture, his private lecture. Um, but we don't, we don't um, follow you, Midnight. We follow instead Professor Humphreys. 
you have not experienced this before. But we follow Professor Humphreys as he walks out of this room and towards an office. The orb above your shoulder says, Miss Danes, I do not understand. I think we're about to, Professor. He enters his office and sits at his desk. After a moment, he, uh, reaching below his desk, fiddles with something and a hidden compartment raises out of it. He takes a key and opens the compartment and pulls out a familiar silver orb. And he looks at it contemplatively. I do hope you can finish what I started, Miss Daines. He says to himself. No, 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 this isn't right. This, this, this cannot be true. This, it, it can't, it can't. This vision is wrong. You hear me, cave? This never happened. The orb above your shoulder as the light dissipates back to a golden fog on the ground. Um, Miss, Miss Danes, I understood what that man was teaching. It has been in books that I have under- come to download and understand. However, I don't, I don't quite know how it relates to this. That orb, though, are there others of me? Is that, I'm quite confused. That man is you, Professor. Miss Danes? Before you became what you were, what you are, that was you. And I have spent the last ten years trying to fight the people that I thought did this to you. I have destroyed many lives trying to get to them. And it turns out this was your choice the entire time. And you even told me in your own indirect way. The lights in the professor's orb uh, stayed dim for quite a moment. I'm sorry, Miss Daines, but I, I must um, process this information that you've told me. If you don't mind opening your bag for me. I open the bag. He gently floats in and comes to rest inside. Close it. From there, we shift into a dungeon room with stone walls. Uh, The light gathers on either side of you, finally kind of forming a room. Um, But not a whole room. What you see are specifically four figures leaning up against these walls. And they seem exhausted. They seem like they have just finished a knockdown drag out battle and are now tending to their wounds. Um, you see Mildred, a woman with a bow lying next to her, breathing heavily, mm-hmm. not seeming to have noticed a wound bleeding at her side. Uh, this is Sylvia. Oh, don't worry. I've got this light work. You're going to be just fine. Oh, <laughs> kind of, kind of went a little deep there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that one, I just am now feeling it since you brought attention to it. And mm-hmm. oh, yeah, that got yeah. me. We need to get mm-hmm. you some new armor. That's, um, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe we should try to look for some here, huh? I like push the arrow through, break off the head, and mm. then like pull it out. That's the best way? Okay. Yeah. Oh, it God. really is. Pulling it out the other way can sometimes do more damage. Yeah, makes sense. I'm the one who uses the bow, so yeah, I should have known that. I throw the pieces away and then just, like, heal her with a, you know, cure wounds. You're, uh... Thanks for being there, Mildred. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
It's fine. A half elven man limps towards you and bends over, taking over for you. Stefan croaks playfully to you. <clears throat> yeah, she uh, she never likes, lets us take care of her, though. I mean, look at you, Mildred. You're half let out yourself after that fight. I don't know if you guys know this. Um, Dragonborn wear very hardy, so I'm. this is nothing, you know? I look... I might look like I'm a little pale and like I've lost a lot of blood. And I did. I, I bled all over the dungeon floor. But I still have more in me than what's on the floor. So I'm fine. Well, I'm glad you have. <laughs> I'm glad we have you to take care of us. That's that's all I got to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. Lucius across the hall, tending to Vanessa, calls mm. out from uh, up against the Darkstone hallway. Yeah, Mildred, you really saved us back there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the Velvet Dagger wouldn't be the same without you. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, it wouldn't be much of a company at all. Um, yeah, oh, that's nice. Do you need anything, Lucius? No, I think um, Vanessa already got me. Uh, right, yeah. Vanessa. Yeah. She helps him to his feet. Mm hmm. But um, make sure that you're. You know, taking care of yourself too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what are we doing after this after party? Yeah, I think I think once we leave the dungeon, um, uh -huh. you know, sell the jewels. Uh, you know, trying to make some upgrades and on to the next one, right? Yeah. I mean, like like now, like a drink maybe or. Yeah, I mean, the four of us we're gonna go get a drink. Um, oh, do you want to come? Yeah, it's it's fine. Oh, you don't have to. This is this isn't like a. You, we, you're not like a fifth wheel or something like that. It's like, <laughs> no, no, no. This no, is, it's this cool. is a, we're all the Velvet Dagger. This is we're all. Yeah. This is we're a team. This is a mm -hmm. kind of a post drink. Like we you no, know, we 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 wanted you to come in the first place. Mm hmm. And I'm, because it kind of seems like you go on couples vacations a lot. And I don't always get the um, invite. I mean, you're always invited. I, we just kind of thought okay. we didn't have to tell you. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Um, okay, yeah. Fuck you guys. I knew this was coming. I, I knew it was coming because everyone else has horrible things. But I didn't have a bunch of family members that died. And I gesture vaguely over to Nerys. And I didn't have, uh, you know, I didn't have to kill somebody because my dad was an asshole. I definitely didn't have a weirdo professor that did profane experiments on himself because he was so obsessed with unlife that he doesn't have a body anymore. I deal with normal things like a normal person because that's what I am. So here is what I say to you, Velvet Dagger. Get fucked, all of you. All of you with your smooth skin and you're, you're all so hot and you're all so cool. I, you would die without me and quite frankly I hope you do I hope you do I'm underpaid I'm overworked I'm tired of hearing you guys fucking in the bunk above mine I'm done I'm done I hate all of you and <laughs> get fucked okay and I'm gonna go and I'm pretty sure it's not some great achievement to fall in love anybody can do it and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find a dragonborn. He's gonna be so I, much taller than you. Uh, is. He's be like I, I hug Mildred during this. I just wrap my arms around Mildred and just squeeze. He's so much hotter than you guys. He is so <laughs> apt, and he thinks I'm cool. So get fucked, get bent, Lucius. <laughs> bent. I pick you up. So many abs. I just start patting you on the back. <laughs> <laughs> and like, then I turn you around so that you face the group that you just cussed out. Yeah. Were they trying to kill you? Because that's the only reason why I can understand your response to the people that were so warmly inviting you to be their friend. They didn't invite me, Nerix. That's the whole thing. They never invite me. I put you down. Do you know what it's like to have like a friend group and everyone gets coupled up and then you're just left on your own as the dorky 
gangly healer that they drag around when they need something but when it comes to partying or anything else you never get invited because you're not cool never no you don't because you have real problems Mm. you have real and i put both my hands on eric's face i'm like you have real problems i have fake problems because i have parents that love me and i i deal with the normal pressures of the world so this seems very small and insignificant to you and that's okay that's okay because oh, I am used this to being the bedrock big. that other people's bigger problems rest on. Because my problems aren't real. And no, no, it's not. And that's okay. That's okay. Okay? Cave, this is it. This is all you got. I don't have a traumatic filled past like most adventurers. So you can't get to me. Merix, you, uh, you turn holding Mildred so that she's able to watch the Velvet Dagger walk away as uh, obviously they had some reaction and something to say, but it got completely drowned out by the warranted outburst from a Mildred. As you see them walking away, uh, coupled up hand in hand, um, you see behind them as they dissipate into the light that falls down to the floor into the low hanging fog, you see, uh, you see light actually more natural light reflecting off of a cave wall ahead of you seems to signal an exit. I will put Mildred down. And thanks for pretending to be my boyfriend back there in front of those assholes. (sighs) uh, You're the best. Stun silence. And you start to see Narex turn bright red. You really showed them. Not when he's green. Um, uh, I was gonna say that uh, it seemed like they uh, really. Never mind. I'm not gonna. Uh, let's go this way, and I start walking towards. No, 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 no. And I like whirl around, and I point at Leontes. I'm like, you, 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 you are still trying to. Have you heard of sunk cost fallacy? No. You did one bad thing, and now you have to justify to yourself that you have to live your life devoted to the gods to make that bad thing somehow worth it, right? But you don't, you don't. You have a brother who loves you, a really hot brother who really loves you and wishes you were present here. But you're so, you gotta you gotta devote yourself to the gods because otherwise killing that innocent man on his knees meant nothing. But here's here's the sad truth of it. It did mean nothing. And you just have to sit with that. And you, you, your professor's an asshole. Okay, what's, so, so there it is. It's because you delve into things. You're so obsessed with, with life that you don't enjoy it while it's here. But guess what? That spirit in that globe, it, you saw it yourself. It doesn't have any of the same memories. So taking out your eye on something that doesn't even remember what it did makes no sense. This is who he is now. And you have two choices. And it's a really tough choice. It really sucks that you have to do this. But you either have to figure out whether or not that life is worth living and either set him free or keep him with you. And that's your brain burden to bear okay and 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 guess what guess what life is hard it just sucks sometimes and these people and this she points at luma they don't make it better because they don't come down and say hey don't kill people for us don't start wars over us in fact i think some part of them probably gets off on it so it's up to us it's up to us mortals to take care of each other fire can burn but it also warms and it gives life and and and, and if anything that's what I've learned, okay? Is that we can't rely on on them. They they hit us up every 300 years when they need us. All we can rely on is each other. All we have is each other. That's it. We're all gonna die. I can't help but notice you left Nerex out of that. That's because he's a good guy. <gasps> it seems like he gets it. Do you I, really I'm sorry. think I'm a bad person for... Being upset? I don't think you're a bad person for being upset. I think there's healthier ways to be upset. Cry. Don't go killing people. Cry. That's what the rest of us do. We cry. Like normal people. To be fair, the people that I did kill were still bad people. But. Be that as it may, it is is easier to kill someone than it is to save someone. I don't know if any of you know that. 
kill I could kill somebody. I could I could make the sun explode. I could sunburst right now and I could kill somebody. You know what's way harder? Bringing them back from the, the brink of death. That's hard. That's very hard. Uh is Narek started walking down towards the other light, uh towards the, the you know the direction uh uh where the light was emanating from and then turns around and it, it, it is there water here did you describe there water is a, on the there floor? is a slight bit of or like a half inch of water pooling on the floor i walk up to mildred and uh an invitation and i reach out a hand oh, okay okay and i kind of you know I, I kind of pull on your arm a little bit so that you could look down. And in our reflection at our feet. Oh, wow, you're even handsomer in reflections. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, um, you are right, I am. Uh, but I would rather you focus on uh, your own. Oh, oh. Um, I've already it's, learned it's what I like that about At this you. angle, your abs become 16 instead of instead of eight Mildred there's... stop 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 I, um, yeah your focus is always on something outside of you and although you're right in all of your observations at least I've noticed what I've noticed so far mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you said that we need to take care of each other and that it's harder to save someone else it's easier to kill them it's even harder to take care of yourself and I'm surprised that the image that this cave didn't present to you was just, it should have been you. It should have been you facing yourself. But by your own remedy, you don't have to do it alone. Consider this an invitation to never have to be by yourself when facing yourself. Um, if and when we survive all this, um, would you be interested in yes. partaking in LA? Okay. Sure. Cool. That's me taking care of myself. <sighs> Um, yeah, we should adventure. It's calling. We gotta win this fight. You start hearing the unclasping of armor from behind you two. Uh, and I've remained very silent as you've um, expounded on what we've seen in this cave here, Mildred. Mm -hmm. um, and I remove my armor and you see I'm bare chested underneath. Um, Thank you for clarifying. How, yes. how many abs does he have? Just as much as my brother. <laughs> um, they're just a on, little let's be clear. small. They're just small. Let's be clear. We're having we're talking a plus seven modifier versus a plus three modifier. So I don't yeah. know. If it's, <laughs> these are show muscles, though. These are show muscles. Yeah, they, yeah, they look know, good in the right it's, light. It's good. It's good. Um, it's still good. <laughs> but I I will I'll, I'll turn around so that you see my back, Mildred, and I'll say. Uh, how many names do you see counted there? And you see that there are mm. 12 names tattooed onto my back. A lot. It wasn't just one soul, Mildred. I killed many people. And I knew they were innocent. And I've spent all of these years trying to undo that. I understand what you've said. But sometimes we just have to look the darkness in the eyes. So are you saying that you killed your father? I killed who he wanted me to kill. Yes, but it seems like the direct recompense for the lives that you were ordered to take would be taking your father's life. What? How does that fix anything? You people need therapy. I... Clearly he's in charge and he's the one ordering people to murder others. Regardless... Leo, you haven't been following his orders in a long time, right? No. 
Why are you still beholden then to him? Because he's my father. But he's not your father. He's done nothing to earn that right. I'll throw the armor back on and start clasping it up. Didn't you say it yourself? The memory's a prologue. This is your story. You're still in it. I'll smile to myself and, and I imagine I'll, I, as Mildred and, and uh, Nerax uh, stand with each other, I'll, I'll, I'll turn to midnight, make eye contact with her, and I'll say, uh, what languages do you speak? I speak Celestial, Common, Infernal, Primordial, Quarry, and, and then I understand Thieves can't. I'll say in Celestial to you, um, I think you're the only one who understands you. I'll speak back in Celestial. I think that the situation is more complicated than the way that they view it, yes. Life is death, death is life. Maybe it's even more complicated than you think, too. Perhaps. But the fact remains is that your father, the reason you feel still attached to this, is because you know that he's taking someone else in your place and that they're continuously murdering people. And that's why you can't forget. Because you know the truth. You wield words like weapons, Midnight. I wield a lot of things like weapons. And there's a reason I'm an artist. But I'm not saying this to hurt you, Leontes. I'm telling you so that you realize why. We have a god to kill, don't we? Yes, but I think that the one that's going to be more difficult is killing your past. But god, we can win. <laughs> You're quite ambitious. <laughs> Luma speaks up in Celestial as well. Did you ask you? Oh. Let's hope he's not a god yet. Or else this is not going to go the way that we would hope. Do you continue forward? Yeah, I'm, I'm continuing forward with Narex the entire time. I'm like, uh, I feel like you're the only one that like, like gets it. Like, <laughs> you know what? I, I I feel the same way about you. It's very, you know. Yeah, like like if someone dies, you you cry, you process, you, you show say vulnerability. You say to their ashes what about their life was meaningful to you. Yes. Yeah. And then you take their ashes and then you sprinkle some of that into a stew and you consume it. Oh my God, yes. I, in our tribe, we rub it all <laughs> over we, our body. Right, you become one with them. You become you, one. Yes. It is, did we? Hmm. But like, it's, what you don't do is tattoo them on your back and go around like, I gotta devote myself to the gods now. What is that? I never asked him who actually did the tattoo because if he did it himself, then that's pretty impressive. But... It is pretty impressive. <laughs> it shows some flexibility for sure. Right. There's I some just... things he and I don't talk about. I'm gonna say to Leontes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Celestial, they're gonna fuck really hard after this. Aren't they? <laughs> no, don't make it. What is the moment? I didn't hear that. What, did you just say that. it's not fair? That. Yes, his abs are so well crafted, and I work really hard for mine. Yours are plenty already. Don't worry about it. Oh. Oh. Is something wrong? No. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Do you guys move forward towards the light? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, me and Nerex are like oh, kind yeah. of. <laughs> we are. We are the. We are. We are one with the light. Yeah. Um. We're as you enjoying it. As you begin to walk towards this light that's reflecting off of finally some structure that is around you. Um, the light from your ancestral guardians begins to dissipate and come back into you. You walk through this filtered light tunnel, um, kind of walking towards the one bit of light that you can see, now finally seeing a natural, the, uh, 
the light that illuminated all of your friends around you is gone. It's not, uh, you know, there's not that unnatural light anymore. It's, it's purely coming from in front of you. Um, and then you see the entryway towards what you assume must be the Lake of the Gods. You, uh, it is this bright feature that, you know, your eyes are kind of adjusting to it. But just as they're adjusting to it, you see a figure step in front, blocking nearly all of it. This hulking figure, vaguely humanoid in shape, steps in front. Hulk, hulking, you say? Yeah. Mm. I draw my weapon. It begins stepping down this tunnel towards you. Don't look too hard, Mildred. Narek's will get jealous. Heavy footsteps start slowly walking, turning into a run, going towards you. And as it becomes closer, you can see the light hit more details of it. And you see distorted, distorted flesh and tissue mix in a horrifying presence in front of you. I'm this annoyed. flesh golem, disturbing, more disturbing than you have seen, stretches Ooh. out its arms specifically in your direction, Mildred. Oh. And you recognize, you almost, in this unintelligible roar, you almost recognize a voice, a few words you remember. Would it be the same? As it runs towards you, oh, you no. see the distorted, barely recognizable facial features spread out through this whole oh, no. figure of Stefan, Sylvia, Lucius, and the message <gasps> from the Velvet Dagger. Roll initiative! Oh my what? god! Oh, oh no! What the fuck? <laughs> oh, this is so fucked up! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm rolling, I'm rolling. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a five. Five. Rolled a two. I used my inspiration to roll twice, and I okay. got a four, and then a 20. And that's 20. Hey, nice. so that gives nice. me a 22. Starting off. But I no longer, I would just like to say, I no longer have my inspiration. Yes. And it's Nerex and Leo. Uh, 14 for Nerex. 10. All right. Starting off with Midnight. What did I say? I rolled a five. Oh, Mildred. I did. <laughs> I missed an L there. Mildred. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. Mildred. Yes. I'm a rogue and I can't move fast. Um... Okay, okay, okay. I got this. Uh, this hulking figure is reaching out to you specifically. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to do some really metal crazy shit. All right. Go for it. With my bonus action, nice. I'm going to cast Flame Blade. And Hell so you yeah. just see this whoosh, giant scimitar made of flame. And then with my action, I am going to turn into a massive dire wolf that nice. is wielding this blade in its <laughs> mouth. Amazing. That's right. realness. That yeah. is your action. You turn into this massive dire wolf. Um, Hooters is still there. You see, like some like some of the fur that that expands from the back of this hunched like this hunched creature, mm -hmm. this like gigantic back of this wolf, is almost like kind of wisping into flames um, from that. You uh, you move forward, kind of get into a defensive stance. We now so I'm going to use up. my movement, uh, since I can't attack this turn, to then position myself behind Narex. Narex, you see a massive dire wolf with like uh, ashy soot gray fur. And like Johnny said, the edges of it are like turning into flame. And in its mouth is a giant flaming scimitar. And it's like, like ready to like assist you. Like it's like ready to tag team this. Nice. Hell Narek's yeah. this flesh golem that has appeared in front of you is sprinting towards specifically that dire wolf. Not if I can help it. Okay, so I am going to... Uh, so, uh, Narex draws uh, uh, the Bloodbound, my weapon, and I am going to uh, step forward so I can intercept this a little more. Uh, with Mildred behind me, uh, in this really awesome direwolf shape, I'm gonna move forward. How far away is the flesh uh, creature from? Like me? 20 feet. I am gonna get right up in its many faces, and yep. I am going to bonus action rage. Uh, As you my... rage, the 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 lights expand again from you, and you see the figures of Professor Humphreys, Vizcaim, and your fallen brother Shouts. 
Fucking A. Wow. Okay. You All see right. your brother stand near you. Professor Humphrey's near midnight, and Vizcaim standing near Leo. And <clears throat> I look at my brother, we make eye contact, and he knows exactly what to do. Protect my allies. Uh, I am going to reckless attack um, this flesh golem. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I have advantage. I rolled a 19 to hit. Yeah, you're, you hit. Amazing. Uh, he is going to take... Uh, for this first attack, he's going to take um, 17... 20 points of, uh, uh, of damage. Awesome. You, uh, you roll, you hit with your, uh, your big glaive and it just almost like sticks into this hide of like bone and tissue extruding from this flesh and you kind of have to yank it back out. I'm going to do it again. So do it again. Reckless attack again. This time I'm activating my orcish fury and my, uh, great weapon. Uh, master. Yep. So this uh, should hit. This is a 22 to hit. That hits. Okay. He is going to take. So that is an extra D10. Uh, he takes 10. 32 points 32. of damage on that one. That one really hurt him. As you yank it out, you use the momentum and with your backhand, slash back into him on the other side onto this velvet dagger flesh golem. Um, that is your turn. Uh, mm -hmm. Ner Sorry, that was Nerik's turn. This is now the flesh golem's turn. As it almost tries to like push past you, Nerix, it is tries to make with all eight of its eyes on its body, try like makes direct eye contact with this dire wolf. Um, May, uh, Mildred, uh, make a intelligence saving throw for me. Okay. Oh, I'm actually good at these. Oh. Uh, that's a 21. 21, you succeed. Um, as it tries to gain, like, get you to move closer towards it, almost in this empathic look that it makes towards you, you realize that it is not making uh, any kind of progress in that and instead cannot get past Nerex and mm -hmm. decides to just make uh, two attacks on Nerex, both at advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a 17 to hit. My AC is 17. Oof, okay. Second one, both advantage. Uh, that one is more to hit. So he's going to do... Could have been higher if you swallowed the potion. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Sometimes characters make dumb choices to yeah, prove a point. Yeah, <laughs> Me and my boyfriend are on this sort of like clean eating diet. Sorry, Holly. Like, we're just, you know. Oh, God. Uh, no. He deals. I'm going to force 40 you points so much gluten. <laughs> of bludgeoning damage 40. to you. I have resistance because I'm raging. Yep. Reduce to 20. Uh, make a. Um, you are now grappled actually. Oh. And after the two slams, it grabs you, slams you twice on the ground, oh. and then forces it inside its gaping maw. Um, you are now engulfed by it, and on your turn, you need to make a constitution saving throw or take damage. Um, you are now swallowed by this thing. Uh, Mildred, you see your pr prospective boyfriend uh, oh. be pulled into, and Nearly oh. as big as this flesh golem, but still dwarfed by him uh, as it swallows it whole, swallows um, Narek's whole. That is the uh, Velvet Dagger's turn. Leo, it's your turn. Wow. You see your brother now swallowed by this thing. Yeah, I uh, grab onto the scruff of, of Nimi's neck and I look to Luma and I say, <laughs> hold on. And I bonus action Misty step behind this thing. Okay. Um, uh, and we'll take my uh, two attacks at advantage because uh, Mildred is opposite me. Is that true? Uh, Mildred's a little bit further away, but um, okay. um, yeah, so no advantage on this one. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I take my, my two swings with the nine lives. Steal them. Let's see it. Mother's kiss. That is a 16 to hit. 16 does hit? 13 points of damage. 
Um, 13 points take of damage. A second swing. 27 to hit. That'll hit. 15 points of damage, and I'll throw a uh, second level smite on that, which is 3d6? 3d8. 3d8, yes. Sorry. So let me get that going. 14 points of damage. All right. This thing is definitely looking hurt, um, but still very strong. But it is not like all of these uh, creatures trying to gang up on it. Uh, Mildred, sorry, Midnight, your turn. All right, so I'm going to finally use um, all my classes to my advantage as much as I can. All right. So I'm going to use um, my Meta Magic Quicken Spell to quicken a spell to a bonus action. Okay. And I am going to cast um, Rhyme's Blinding Ice. I'm going to Ooh. swing out, twirl my paintbrush spell focus and spread blue paint that turns into blinding ice. And I'm going to cast it at a third level. Um, All right. See, that's a, a con there? 15 save. The plus 10 to con saves. Oh no. And you rolled a 19. Okay, so, that so is it's successful. half damage. Half um, damage, okay. Cool. So that is five damage. It's an 11. Okay. Um, and then I am going to so I am standing near um, Mildred and Narix, correct? Uh, yeah, sure. Cool. So uh, since well, Narix is action, now swallowed, but yes. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. So <laughs> I am going. That means I because in um, allies within five feet, that means I can get sneak attack. I'm going to take. I'm going to attack with my um, crossbow. Okay. I'm going to take sharpshooter on this, which is a minus five. Let's see how this works. I'm going to roll in real life because that is a 21 to hit. Yes, that definitely cool. hits. So, this thing is just uh, a big, meaty sack. Mm. Not super hard to hit. Mm. Love that. Did you like that? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Big, meaty sack. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is 14 base damage plus um, repeating shot because it's an infused weapon, so that's 15 for normal damage. Now I'll roll sneak attack damage, which I think it's 3d6. So another 15 on top of that 14? Um, I have to roll it. Um, oh, okay. You were right though, Johnny. She had 14 and then 15 because of Okay, it. gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, because of the infusion. Yeah, so 15. And then that's another... Um, math is hard. 12 damage on top of that. Okay. Oh, wait, plus are... sharpshooter. So another 10 on top of that. Okay. So, yeah. Got it. Um, See, having third cla three classes isn't necessarily a bad idea. <laughs> you, uh, is, but... you take advantage <laughs> of all of the attention being forced onto uh, really Mildred. Um, and Mildred, top of the round, it's your turn again. Okay. Um, I am going to use my action to attack and then use my bonus action to have Hooters potentially help Nerex. Um, okay. So with my action, I attack with my Flaming Blade. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a plus eight to hit. I have pack tactics, so I get advantage on you this. You do get because advantage because Leo's next to him. Leo's next to him. Nice. Uh, it's a good thing because I rolled a seven, but with this, I guess a 18 plus eight, so 26. That'll hit. And then that is 4d6 fire damage. Um, that's 16 points of fire damage. 16 points of fire damage. All right. Yeah. So you just see this wolf go like bounding forward and try to like cut something open to hopefully help Narix out. Hooters shares my initiative. So um, with my bonus action, I'm going to have Hooters like fly in to this giant flesh golem. Maybe that's a bad idea. And then um, she can teleport a, w each willing creature of her choice within five feet up to 15 feet away. Okay. So as long as Nerex is willing and as long as she gets in there. Nerex says yes. <laughs> <laughs> what if the flesh golems also- You have consent. You, uh, I know I was thinking that too. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Hooters, flies into this weird amorphous like gaping maw mm -hmm. of um this opening within the flesh golem flies in and doesn't doesn't it's like not all airborne he needs to start like wiggling around in there to like push itself forward through this like esophagus uh -huh. and uh Nerex, you while blind and almost 
you know, every sense of the word, do see, like, hear like another f- figure close to you, mm-hmm. and uh, you can sense that there is something small kind of crawling down the esophagus of this creature. I reach for it. I mean, if I got swallowed like head first, then I'm going to try to reach for it with my feet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I chop sure. my foot. <laughs> you still stretch out your foot, yep. and uh, what, is, what does Hooters do? The sound is supposed to be. Um, Hooters is going to try to teleport. 15 feet away, taking okay. Narix with. And that damages but... everything around it, right? Yes, unfortunately. Uh, yes. Um, oh, we'll, d- nice. we'll damage Narix or we'll, d- we'll just damage the uh, Flesh Clone? It'll damage whoever is near her when she comes out, so or the location she teleports to. So I think it'll oh, damage... Oh, the new location. Yeah, it'll damage the Flesh Golem and me. Um, cause I'm standing, gotcha. I'm, I'm engaged in melee with it. So that's okay. I, okay, why don't you roll that damage? Um, so I get a, de- a, they get a deck save. Not its strong suit and it rolls a nine. Okay. I get a deck save as well. I also fail. <laughs> you, if you're within a paladin's aura, you're going to get a bonus to it. You are next to, and yeah, the Ooh, flesh um, doesn't get that, but you do. That's a plus five. How much, ooh, do I silver eight barbs this? So that's an eight plus five. That would give me 13. Not Does that good. beat your saving throw? Uh, no, I saw no. okay. 16. So you're taking this damage. Okay. And but it's just it's your not wolf that much. Form. Yeah, it's eight. Eight, eight fire damage. damage. Okay. Mm-hmm. So my wolf form takes eight fire damage. So go down to 29. I have to be careful with that last silvery bars because I only have one more left since we didn't get a All long right. rest. Uh, that was uh, Mildred's turn. Nerex, you pop out of this thing like on your ass. You're like, you kind of fall head first onto the ground and land there next to the wolf after this big explosion happens. Um, and you see uh, you see the big flesh column in front of you with this wolf kind of taking a protective stance in front of you. I love it. Uh, when it's my turn, I will do more damage, hopefully. It is your turn yeah. now. Oh, it's my turn. Oh, that's okay, great. Yeah. That's my cue. Okay, awesome. So, uh, wiping off some of whatever that like saliva or whatever like oh yeah, know, it's wet. stomach acid or whatever was all over me. I wipe it off, <laughs> fling it onto the ground, uh, grab my uh, 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 the blood bound at, uh, my pole arm and charge forth right next to the dire wolf that's right in front of me, and I'm going to strike reckless attack. Uh, okay. And uh, this is Are a you doing- turn. Are you doing um, heavy weapon master? I'm doing heavy weapon master, reckless attack, and my orcish fury. So this is a whole okay. new turn. I'm doing everything. <laughs> this is the barbarian version of a smite right here. Yes, pretty much. Uh, that is a uh, 25 That'll to hit. hit. Yes. Let's just be clear. It's AC's 13. Oh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> okay. Okay, then that is 12 plus 22 is 34 points of damage. Uh, 34 points of damage. That is yes. that's pretty uh that's pretty smite worthy, I think. Yeah, not bad. And I'm gonna go right back at it with another strike. Uh and that's gonna hit. That's above a 13. And this is not with an Orcish Fury attack, so okay. So this is 26 uh points of damage on that second attack. Oof. So swipe <laughs> and then the the, See, the 26? Pole arm, uh 26, yeah. 26 okay it is looking very hurt at this point um awesome you you make these two slashes with bloodbound and you 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 feel like this is this has got to be it like you you have to see this thing start falling over it is kind of wobbly but it stays up and looks uh, again right at you um Rather than trying to go after Mildred at this point, it's going to it's going to try to try to continue going after you. Uh-huh. Uh, attacks are at advantage. That is a seventeen on the die plus that, uh, a lot. That's a hit. Second attack, uh, you become engulfed again. Oh! Uh, almost get almost get. Uh, uh, no, you do get silvery hit barbs. You almost get silvery barbs. All right. Yeah, um, I, he is. I can't let him get swallowed again. He is already swallowed. If he hits on one attack, he can he can engulf him. Oh well, I'm and um, two. You have to reroll. You can, hold, you can take that back if you two. like. Okay. Um, that is going to save it from being a hit, though. So it's only one point of damage. Sorry, not one point of damage, but it is. Um, 
13 plus 6, 19 points of damage reduced to 10 for you. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. You just hear like a loud, muffled roar from inside of this thing's esophagus. And then with, uh, with the rest of its turn, it is going to look to you again, Mildred, uh-huh. and uh, try to uh, use its emotional lure. So oh, make another God. intelligence saving throw. Okay. Emotional lure? Well, it's definitely not physical attractiveness lure. Uh, 14? <laughs> 14 does not succeed. You are charmed by this creature. Oh, oh no. Oh, you no. see the eyes of your former friends She's and just within, feel uh... extreme pity. You are within five feet. Yeah. Ten, within, within 10, ten feet. feet. So it's a plus five. What is that? 19? Oh, 19. Uh, yeah. That saves. Oh, that God. does save. <laughs> uh, so despite the just empathy that you feel for this creature, it's your former, your former friends, you know, you left on bad terms, but mm-hmm. do they really deserve this? Yeah. Uh, they have been trying to get you to within its, within its grasp, almost manipulatively, uh, but you're able to resist it. Uh, it is now Leo's turn. This thing is looking very bad, Leo. Cool. Uh, I will bonus action hop on to uh, Nimi. Okay. Um, New Luma's up there with you. Yeah. And I'll just again say hold on. And I'm going to charge at it and uh, try to unseam it from the nave to the map. All right. Ooh. Roll the hit. That's oh. such a good turp. That, ooh, <laughs> That's I love a 27 that. to hit. That'll hit. With advantage, so I'm just going to roll it. You're rolling with advantage because you're mounted? Yeah. Okay. Um, 14 points of damage. 14, okay. Uh, and I'll take a second swing at it. Roll it. Uh, 11 points of damage on the second, and I'll throw a smite on it. And you got All your right. improved smite too, so you always get a D8. Oh yeah, roll a D8 for every piece of damage. You have a chance of killing this thing right now. That's eight points of damage. Ooh, okay. Uh, and then get I'll me roll out of here! The uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, I'm going to burn a first level spell slot, so that'll be 3d8 for 17 points of damage. 17. It is very close to going down. Um, you see your opening uh, uh, midnight, and you see it's all caught up with all the three creatures around it. You can slowly take slow, deep breaths, and you may begin your turn. There. <laughs> no, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. Okay, so I am. Am I still yeah, close yeah. to everyone else? I was. You can I was be. Going to look at Mildred and say, "So should I not kill this?" Oh no! You, you should definitely kill it. It's a horrible. So you support killing this? This is an <laughs> abomination stitched together this, this against. This is an abomination of your former friends. Yeah, but this 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 can die. So anything you decide is unworthy. Not Luma unworthy. Screams out, I think it's time to put it down. I'm just going to passively like sneak attack and okay. like shoot yeah. the thing yeah. without even looking at it. Okay, so that is an 18 hit. That hits. Uh, Midnight, how do you want to do this? Um. So as I'm snidely talking to Mildred, mm-hmm. I will just like mm-hmm. passively shoot the crossbow bolt and hit it dead center in one of its eyes so that the bolt penetrates and like a splash of goo just goes straight through it. Uh, you shoot this bolt straight through it. Uh, just a small little wound um, perfectly placed as it slowly begins to topple over, almost deflating in this rot that has quickly occurred through this uh, creature. Um, Nerex, you are stuck within this thing, but you see it, feel its grip loosening on you as it kind of just sloughs away uh, 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 apart from your body, and you are left standing in the middle of this gore. Um, I'm going to use you, my reaction yeah. to cauterizing flames. Okay. So uh, I gain the ability to turn death into life, and so this the the corpse kind of collapses into uh, flame-like harmless flame-like spirits of my friends and they will heal uh, Nerex for 2d10 plus my wisdom modifier. Wow. Ooh, okay. That's awesome. 
Um, wow. So is that Wildfire be... Druid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is dope. Part of it. That's a dope ability. As so you're you rolling roll... this he healing. Uh, how much, how 20 damage. 20 wow. damage. Wow. That's perfect. Um, nice. As you are, are healing Nerex, this huge kind of like very quickly um, uh, just extremely hot fire takes uh, root within this creature and burns away. And as you can see, um, as you can see it burning away, the parts that burn away are kind of all of the interstitial pieces that have connected the rest of the Velvet Dagger members. As you, the last parts that turn to ash mm. are the individual people that were stuck in there. Lucius, uh, Sylvia, um, Vanessa, and Stefan, all you see are laid to rest in this, um, you know, turn to ash in this funeral pyre-esque um, send off. I take the ashes and just kind of sweep them across my eyes, like I was mentioning earlier, and down the shoulders. And I turn around, like, kind of talking the way one would to a small child. And I'm like, for the record, Holly, I'm not against killing. I just don't think it would solve Leonti's problems. But I understand that with your school learning, maybe they didn't teach you empathy. Um, anyways. And I'd understand that your empathy applies to everyone but yourself, and you're impossible to deal with your own personal problems, aren't you? Uh, I mean, Eric's already But said you can that. advise everyone else on there. I'm making wide eyes at my brother. Oh, listen. <laughs> Me too. Right back. <laughs> I don't claim to have all the answers. You sure talk a lot for someone who doesn't. You talk very little. But presume I know, because I keep my words to myself. You might try it sometime. No, no. I don't think we're the enemy. Uh, we should probably keep... Humans, they're just... The guys are always like those. Oh, so now we're being racist. I'm oh, half just, human. I'm not even human. No, no, they're all like... They're all like those guys. I'm half human. I know I don't look like it, but... No, I just... They're all I'm like I'm not those. human. Uh, I will go up to Mildred. I'm kind of like this. And, uh... We get very emotional. <laughs> The ash that's on your forehead, I will uh, rub some of it off. As you were doing, you were demonstrating your ritual, I respond in kind with the one I described myself. Um, I don't see a stew, so I'll just lick the ashes. Yeah, yeah. You, I get. You make sense to me. <laughs> you make sense to me. Yeah, some of these other people, just, just, I don't get it. You know? I don't get them either. Eating ash like this, this makes sense. Like, as you begin uh, to uh, recover from this fight, um, you have the open doorway in front of you into the Lake of the Gods. I have, before we go, one thing. Mm. Not for you, Mildred. Mm. Luma, does being uh, a demigod yes. mean you can't do anything for yourself? <sighs> Were you content to just watch our compatriots get swallowed and do nothing except sit on a borrowed steed i i understand your qualms i will i will do my best to make myself useful in the fight i understand that i'm not pulling my weight at this point but i my daughter has trained in this form for thousands of years i am i'm new to this body you are new to this body, but does that body have the inability to do anything whatsoever? If it comes to it, I, I think that I can think of some ways to help. Sorry, Luma, she's just like this. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry as well. I, 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 I'm, I really no need, to be, <laughs> no need to be sorry. No need to be sorry. How she's addressing a, a Leo, guy. stop. Okay. <sighs> I understand your anger. Midnight and it's not anger. I want to make things. It's right. disappointment. Oh God! Be that as may. And with that, we will end episode three of, <laughs> of Dawn and Dusk. Uh, thank you, players, for an incredible 
um, <laughs> session three. That was emotions are all over the place. That was a that was God, an ending I just that decided, was. I just decided to be a bitch. I just I don't. I just, you know, just conflict like is what they come for. You are watching for this conflict, and I love you for it. Uh, you guys are amazing. Um, quick shout out to our sponsor, Hit Point Press, who provided us with the stat block for the Velvet Dagger Flesh Golem. Uh, you can find um, that stat block that is uh, named Daniel uh, within the Big Bads uh, damn, Kickstarter. Daniel. Uh, damn, Daniel. Uh, you can see it within the Kickstarter that starts next month. Um, thank you, Hit Point Press, for that. Um, and thank you, all of you, for watching. I am so excited to be able to get to the last and final episode of, of Dawn and Dusk. Um, I hope you guys are excited about it as well. And I will see you next time uh, in the world of Miracle. Bye now. Thank you.